G'day, welcome to another edition of Five Minutes with Fitzy. Peter is here. Hello. G'day. Ask me how I am. Uh, how are you, Peter? I'm not good. No. I'm in pain. I'll get the violin out. Go. I think I've I think I've torn my abductor or something in right. my anyway. Enough about me and my health, but I was running fast. I shimmied left, I shimmied right, I hit the gap, and then suddenly like a stabbing pain in my thigh. But anyway, let's get to the point. Yep. That'll keep them. One big burning issue that mm. I'm very passionate about. You are? I am very which passionate is not about like this. You. Which, no, I, I think it, this is high time. This has been discussed yeah. here in this segment. So the Age journalist, um, Daniel Cherney, the other day, yep. he put out on social media, and I liked it mm. because I agree with it. He said, probably time to retire the WAG acronym, Tired Outdated Reinforces Gender Stereotypes. Mm. And did you think that, hang on, did you think that before, what I'm, I'm not saying yes. that you're immediately influenced, but I've is it thought that, it for, I've just, I've, have you? he was speaking my language, like yeah. I've just, I cannot stand it, when it, and it's splashed on front pages all the time, mm. women who are either married or partners of male sports stars, being t given a title, like, if you went and watched Lisa mm. compete in an event, mm. what's your title? Partner. Exactly. So See, why this, can't they just be partners? This, why do we have to call them wags, wives and girlfriends? This, this, is a, such a, this is such a rare pleasure because this is five minutes with Bracey. Yeah. You see, because he's climbed down off the fence. He feels absolutely passionate about something. And I, I'll tell you my, my take on it. When I first, when this first came up, I thought, well, who cares? I mean, that's what you call them. But anyway, I did when I'm in when I'm in that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I sometimes take advice, and so on really? this, on matters like this, I called my mentor, Liz Ellis. Ah, the Oracle, <laughs> the captain of Sports for, Sunday, for her to tell me what I think. And it's interesting. Like so, when I thought so, at my first blush on the whole thing, it's fine. What yep. when you when the camera pans across to the wives and girlfriends of the chess cricketers on Boxing Day, mm -hmm. there they are. What is it that, that you want Mark Taylor to say they are? Well, this is the partners. The, the partners, partners of the cricketers, the partners, all yeah. there. You know, well, Liz's there. point to me, and it's interesting. So when I think about it for longer than five seconds, I get what you're on about. But I must say, prior to that, it hadn't occurred to me that this was particularly... Liz's point is you're defining women by their relationship to the males. And the interesting thing, the reverse, there is no, what would you call them, husbands and boyfriends. There's no habs. They, you know, when, you, when we see the women, well, like women's cricket team or whatever, yep. th th that is not a term for habs. And I'm wondering too, journalistically, making this up as mm -hmm. I go along. Why not? But you're probably too young to remember, but in the 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s, there was the page three girls. Do you remember the page? Well, yeah, well, they not? still do it in the UK, don't oh, they? Oh, do they? I don't know, they do. But basically, the page three girl, which is what it was known as, Mind was, blowing that it's was, a was a, usually a buxom lass yep. on page three that would help sell the paper. With very so little that, on. So that journalistic vibe, that media yep. vibe of, here's an attractive woman, what about that? What about you buy the papers and every day you'll see a very attractive woman? And I'm wondering, I'm making this up as I go along, yep. but if that, exactly that same vibe that used to sell papers in the 60s, 70s and 80s until... Like, is the ingrained in... Is ingrained in focusing on the attractive wives and girlfriends of the, of the male players. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I've, you, your reaction to WAGs has been my reaction to cheerleaders, the whole cheerleaders. I, when I played American football in Ohio, late 70s, we had cheerleaders in our team, and I was keen on cheerleaders back then, but she wasn't keen on me. But don't get me started. Her name was Laurie Brown. <laughs> she broke my heart. Get the violin but, out again. But, when, but my thing on cheerleaders gen generically is, do we really have to do in Australia... Women going rah, 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 beauty, beauty, beauty. I've when we have little girls growing up, we want the little girl, little Australian girls to look at Taylor Harris, to mm. look at Ash Barty, to look at I could be, this is who I could be. Uh, Elise Perry, this is who I could be, rather than going rah, rah, rah. Tell me with league, I don't see, in, do I see any cheerleaders? There, there are, are they all gone? No, there are some clubs that do it, some that don't. And I was of the, your view. I thought, mm. why, you know, why do it? But if you talk to to women that are actually mm. cheerleaders. Like, it is an industry. Like, I mean, the yeah. US, we know it's an industry yeah. in the US, but they're passionate about it. It's Whether it's an outlet for them, um, an urn, mm. or it's you know it's dancing, it's fitness. It's, you know, it ticks all the boxes. So for you them. don't so, want wags, you're sick of wags, but you're quite fine no, with I'm, women going rah, 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 to you be honest, new beauty. To be honest, probably at my core, I'm not. Mm. 
What? Oh, geez, I'm giving oh, you my opinion today. Bracing. So he's down off well, the just, fence and he's in terrible trouble. But if you talk, I've spoken to, I've spoken to, because like, I spent a lot of time uh, on the sidelines at the footy. Yeah. And, you know, they love what they do. There's so. no doubt they're fine women, love yeah. them like sisters. But so the, generically, I'm not in favour of it. Tell me this, who's the most famous wag in history? I've got one in mind. Oh, in the current era, I think you'd probably... Oh, we have... don't even use the term wag. Who's the most famous partner in history? Yeah, at the current era, mm. you're probably going, well, it's always, for me, it comes back to the cricket. Mm. The wives and girlfriends just sort of always seem to have yes, been a big right. part of the cricket spectacle. Because, yes, the cameras have got to go and pan to the crowd yeah. occasionally throughout when you're like right. eight hours of test cricket for mm. you know, five days back to back. Um, but I'd say Candace Warner in the modern day. Oh, yeah. But again, um, well, well, I was going to say Victoria Beckham. Oh, well, you... But, yeah, but that's where, yeah. which I think is basically about the time Absolutely. frame is where WAGs came along. But both Candace Warner and Victoria Beckham both made their fame in other fields beforehand anyway. So the definition of WAG, according to Lexico, a mm. wife or girlfriend of a sports player typically ca characterised as having a high media profile and a glamorous lifestyle. Well, that's mm. where Victoria Beckham certainly ticks the... The box is there. Mm. So. And the most famous line that Victoria Beckham ever said about David Beckham? You know it? Is this about his... Yeah. Right. Oh, we can say it. It's all yeah, right. She said it on Sir Michael... Pa Sir Michael Parkinson was interviewing her and David Beckham. And she said, I refer to him as Golden Balls. And, that, it's his and if now. it's okay for Sir Michael Parkinson to put it out on BBC, I think it's okay to put it out on Five Minutes with Fitzy. Oh, look, our producer just fainted. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>